Welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. Today we're going to be having fun with clay. First things first, notice that I have taken off my watch and any rings. This is very important because your hands are going to get dirty if you're working with clay. One thing that I like to do is set them aside in a little bowl that I have made for that purpose. This is a pinch pot made out of clay. So I can just set them there, set that aside, and I'll have those handy whenever I need them. There are lots of fun little things that you could create with clay, but before we actually start building anything with clay, we need to have an understanding of what we're actually using. This is Stonex air dry clay. Now this Stonex air dry clay works in your hands very, very much the same as a lot of earth clays that have to be cooked in a kiln. And this clay will get hard when it is dry and it does not have to be cooked in an oven or a kiln or anything at all. Once it is dry, it's rock hard. And this just dried overnight, about 24 hours. Also, before we can start making anything out of our clay, we need to understand just a few things about how to work with this stuff. When you have a giant block of clay, like this, it usually comes in a plastic bag. Why is it in a plastic bag? Because you don't want it to get dry. Well, oh, clunk. If I take this out of the plastic bag, now I just have basically a big old brick. How do I, how do I cut this into smaller, more workable pieces? Cause I can't really just like start making something out of this big chunk. A lot of people think, well, you could get out a knife and cut it. This isn't actually a knife. It's a clay cutting tool. But if I like stick this in here and try to cut something, it doesn't really move. It's really hard to move. Um, so you can see that the clay is sticking to it and it's hard to move through. So to cut large chunks of clay, we use a wire cutter, a wire cutter like this. Now it has handles that you can hold on the two, two ends. I like to wrap one around one of my hands to make a smaller wire to cut with so I can get more precise. And I'm just going to wrap it around over here, pull it through, and that cut my clay straight through real quick and easy. That's cool. Now you might be wondering, What's the difference between this clay and something like Play-Doh? Well, clay actually comes out of the ground. Here in Alabama, if I go outside and start digging with a shovel, there's gonna be a couple inches of topsoil where it's like brown dirt, but then underneath that, it's red clay. If you've ever been digging with a shovel and you find red, red dirt, it's really clay, that's what it is. Um, and different places around the world have different colors and different types of clay. A lot of times you can find clay in the soil, under the soil, near rivers and streams. But really it's abundant all around the planet. Whereas something like Play-Doh is actually made out of food, right? Play-Doh is usually made out of like flour or starch of some kind. It's, it's more of what we would call a dough, just like pizza dough or bread dough or cookie dough. It's made out of food. That doesn't mean you should go eat Play-Doh though. It wouldn't taste good. It's got colors added to it and other chemicals in there that you don't want to be eating. And you probably shouldn't go eating a lump of clay either. It's dirt. It just, no, no. Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about eating. We should be talking about sculpting. There are a couple of things about this clay that we need to understand before we work with it. Things about how this clay works. 
So before you get out a lump of clay and start working, we need to understand what other tools we're gonna need and why we're gonna need them and how we're gonna need to use them. So you're gonna need some kind of scoring tool. Now this is just a plastic uh, knife looking tool that came out of a clay supply kit. Uh, but really all I need to be able to do with this is scratch the surface of the clay. I'm not gonna be using it to try to like cut the clay in half. I'm also gonna need some kind of water cup. Now I've just got this little condiment cup, little ketchup cup full of uh, water. And you really don't need much water. As a matter of fact, one of the things that you really, really, really don't want to do is you don't want to go and get your hands too wet and get the clay all wet because then it just gets all slimy and muddy all over your hands. Ugh, and it's really, really hard to hold. It's slippery, slimy, and it's really hard to make anything out of it because it just slides around. And on the flip side, you also don't want it to be too dry because it gets crumbly and hard to, hard to work with if it's too dry. And if you leave it out overnight, then it'll turn hard as a rock. So the best thing is to keep your clay in some kind of a Ziploc bag until you are ready to actually make something out of it. And one last thing before we get started here, the only time you actually need the cup of water is if you're gonna be building something where you're connecting different pieces together which we will be doing in this lesson. So let's start by learning that skill. If we have two chunks of clay, two chunks of clay, whatever, doesn't matter what they are, and we want to put them together to make a sculpture. Well, I just stick them together, right? Right, I just go and stick them together and they're done, right? That's, they're sticky, so they stick together, right? Wrong. So here's the problem. Is still two separate pieces. And if I stick these two together and then let it dry overnight, then tomorrow morning, they're just gonna come back apart because it's two separate pieces. And when they're dry, they're not sticky, right? Here I have some dry clay and it's not sticky at all. So in order to stick two chunks of clay together, we have to use a process called scoring and slipping, okay? Now, this is just for demonstration purposes. I don't actually really need these two pieces to be connected, but here's what, you, here's what it means to score and slip. For starters, you use something, anything. If you don't have a clay tool like this, you could use an old pencil, you could use a stick, it doesn't matter. And you just scratch the surface where you want the two pieces to connect. Right? So if I want these two to connect right here, I need to scratch the surface on one or both. It's best to do both, but sometimes you only need to do one. And you can see it looks almost like I just made checkerboards there. Then we slip the clay. That's called scoring, what we've already done. Scoring just means scratching the surface. And then slip is like a, you can think of it like clay glue. It's a really wet, sticky clay. To make that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one fingertip into our water, just one little drop of water and rub that in. We might need a second drop, but we're doing it one drop at a time. One drop of water, rub that in. It should make kind of a thick paste there. You don't want it to be too wet and runny. We do that on both pieces. Really just one drop of water usually does the trick. Did I stick my whole hand in the water? No. Look, it's just that one fingertip that got a little bit wet. Now, that fills those little grooves. That slip acts like glue. It acts like cement and glues these two pieces together. So now I can press these two together and you can start to see that slippy, squishy stuff oozing out the edges, just like if you were to press two papers together with glue in between them. And that, if I leave it like that overnight, it will be one solid piece tomorrow morning because that slip 
will harden the two pieces together. Well, that's interesting, but we don't want to just put lumps together. We want to actually make something interesting. Today, we're going to be making little gargoyle creature character monster thingies. Interesting fact, the word gargoyle means throat, throat. When you see gargoyles on top of buildings, like in old cathedrals in Europe and things like that, those gargoyles are actually uh, used as a gutter, a gutter like, like you would have around your house to take rainwater that falls on the roof and make it go away from the roof. That's what the gargoyles were originally used for. They were used as a gutter, as a downspout, to make that water from the roof just pour off um, away from the building. So why did they decorate them like little monsters and demons? Well, they decorated them all scary looking because they wanted to scare the demons away. They want that, you know, they, they thought, hey, well, we'll put these decorations on the roof to keep our house safe from the demons. So how are we going to make our little monster character things today? Well, it's real easy. You're going to start with a chunk of clay. Uh, you know, about this size, maybe one inch by one inch by two inches. And the first thing is we need to split it into two chunks because uh, I, I need to, you know, start with like the main body or shape of the, of the monster and then attach other things to it. So uh, I'm going to pull this. Pulling doesn't really work, does it? The way you split this into two chunks of clay is you twist it. See how much easier it pulls apart when you twist it? Anyway, I'm going to set one of those lumps aside on my plate here. I'm, I'm working on a little plate so I don't mess up my table and get it all sticky and gross. Um, but uh, what, what I'm going to do with this first uh, chunk of clay is I'm going to make a pinch pot. If you uh, aren't familiar with how to do that, I do have a video on how to do that, but I'll show it very quickly here just in case. You start by rolling a ball. So I'm going to hold out a hand place this in my hand, put my other hand on top, and roll in circles. If I do lazy circles like this, it ain't gonna do much. I need to press it while I roll it, and if I'm rolling in circles, it will make a ball. If I'm rolling forward and backward, it's gonna make a coil, which is like a wiggly, wormy shape. If I'm rolling in circles, it will make a ball. Did I put it on my plate and roll a circle? No. Did I put it on my table and roll a circle? No, because I don't want it to stick to the table or stick to the plate. I want to roll it in my hands. Once you've got a ball, to make your pinch pot, you make little crab claws with your hands. And you point them away from you with your thumbs together and your fingers on the outside. And you hold your clay like that, with your thumbs pointing towards the clay, with your thumbs together, and your fingers on the outside. And you gently press your thumbs into the top to make a butt groove. See how it looks like somebody sat down on the couch for too long and they left cheek marks where they were sitting? Then you keep your thumbs in those grooves, you turn the clay just a little bit, and you press those thumbs down just a little bit more. You can see how it's already starting to make a bowl, right? Turn a little bit, press a little bit, turn a little bit, press a little bit. Be very gentle. You don't want to stick your thumb all the way through this. And I can do this with my eyes closed. All I'm doing is feeling anywhere where the clay is too thick. My thumbs are on the inside. Always. I don't want to turn around this way. Anywhere where it's too thick. I squeeze, I pinch, and that spreads the clay out and makes it thinner. And so I'm just trying to feel it to make sure that the whole thing is the same thickness. I don't want any lumps. I don't want any areas that are too thick or too thin. And once I have my pinch pot, 
I'm going to kind of squash it to make a mouth. Then that, that's going to be the basic structure, the basic form of our monster. Now we need to make eyes, teeth, tongues, horns, hair, ears, whatever. It's totally up to you. I'll show you how to make a couple of those things here, but you can take it and roll with it and make it whatever you want. So for starters, I'll make a tongue. Okay. To make a tongue, we want a flattish shape. I'm going to, again, just tear a chunk off of this. That might be a little more than I need. Mm, yeah, that's more than I need. I'm going to tear off another smaller chunk. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by rolling a thick coil. It's kind of short, but it's thick. Did I roll it out all the way into like a worm? No. No, let me scrunch that back together and try again. I'm gonna roll a thick coil, okay? It's not too long. It's about the length that I'll, I would want a tongue to be sticking out of this mouth. Then I pinch it flat between my fingers and thumb. Pinch it flat between my fingers and thumb. And I can just kind of shape it to the shape of a tongue. And if I just put this in that pinch pot, you can see how that looks like the tongue sticking out, right? And that's stuck, right? No, it's not. I need to, how do I connect two pieces of clay? If I just, if I just press it in like that, then when it's dried, the tongue is gonna fall out. I need to score and slip. So I'm going to scratch the surface, not along the whole thing, but just the part where they're gonna connect. I'm gonna scratch that surface. I could do it on the inside of here too. Sometimes you only need to do one piece, but anyway, then I'm gonna slip it. I'm gonna get one drop of water on one fingertip. Did I stick my whole finger in there? Did I stick my whole hand in there? No, I've just got a little bit of water here, just one fingertip into that water and rub into those grooves. It gets slimy and slippery and gluey. All right, I'm gonna do that here as well. And then I'm gonna put those two pieces together and I'm gonna kind of squeeze them gently together. If you look closely, you can see little bubbles and little bits of clay slip coming out the edges. Just like if you were gluing two papers together and you pressed them together, you would see the glue coming out the edges. That means that these two pieces are pretty good and stuck together, okay? If I want, I can use my scoring tool also for decorative marks, like the line down the middle of the tongue, right? Maybe, you know, like the texture, the groove in the middle of the tongue. Okay, I think next I'll make some eyeballs. You make two eyes, three eyes, 12 eyes, 600 eyes, whatever. To make those eyeballs, I'm gonna take a chunk of clay. I'm going to split it in half by twisting and pulling and I'm gonna make those two into small balls. Roll a ball by rolling in circles. Circles to make a ball, okay? And then roll another ball. Notice that at no point have I used my entire chunk of clay here. I have extra clay for other things. I've been peeling chunks off to use for all these different pieces. Now, I just want the eyeballs to kind of sit on top like this. And uh, in order for them to actually stick, I need to score and slip. So right where they're going to connect, I'm going to make like a little tic-tac-toe board. And a little bitty tic-tac-toe board where they're going to stick. Or hashtag is what some people say. And then I'm going to slip it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the eyeballs themselves. Little tiny tic-tac-toe board. A little tiny tic-tac-toe board. Slip. Slip. And then I'm gonna put those edges together. And now I gotta be careful. I'm gonna put a finger inside the, um, 
the pinch pot so that I don't squish the whole thing. And also I gotta be careful when I press this eyeball on, I don't want to like squish it flat. So I'm gonna gently, carefully press these together. I do want to be firm. I do want them to be actually stuck together, but I don't want to change the shape of the eyeball too much. I want it to still be a sphere, okay? So again, a finger on the inside to press against without squishing the whole thing together. There we go. Now, uh, to make the pupils, or the dots in the middle of the eyes, I'm, I'm just going to make little circles with my scoring tool. Did I poke all the way through it? Nah. Just make little circles with my scoring tools. And if there's a little chunk of clay like this that, you know, gets in there, you just kind of pull that off and, you know, put that on your plate, throw it away later. Well there, I've already got a pretty good start on my uh, cute little monster thing. Maybe next I want some teeth. I'm gonna tear off, twist and pull a little chunk of this and I'm gonna roll this into a coil forward and backward to make a coil or a wormy shape. And uh, with this wormy shape, I can just break it, just pinch it off into little teeth shapes little pointy teeth, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to score along the bottom edge of this mouth on both sides where I want the teeth to connect. I'm gonna slip it on both sides where I want those teeth to connect. And then one tooth at a time Right? I've got this long coil. I'm just going to pinch off a piece and, you, and then just kind of squash the end of it down onto where I have scored and slipped like that. Again, I have this piece that I just peeled off the end of my coil. I'm just going to squash it into place. And I can kind of pinch the ends to make them pointy. Okay, and I can put in however many teeth I want. I'll twist off a piece here. Let's put some teeth on this side. Do the teeth have to be on the bottom of the mouth? I could make fangs coming down from the top too if I wanted. Pinch and pull a piece of this off. Make one end pointy by just pinching it and squeezing it, and then press it down in to the place where I have scored and slipped. Now, none of these are gonna be perfect, and that's okay, because it's a little monster. If I was trying to make like, you know, um, a, a tiger or a giraffe or a lion or an antelope or something like that, then I would need to actually make it look you know, like real life, but I'm just making a little monster gargoyle thing. So it's not like it has to be perfect. Okay, what if I want some ears? I, I could keep going with teeth and make another row of teeth. What if I want some ears? Well, if ears are my last thing, I don't mind using all the rest of my clay. So what I'm gonna do is split this chunk of clay in two pieces, one for each ear. Again, I just twist to make two pieces of clay. And for the ears, I'm gonna start by rolling a ball. It's really gonna depend on what shape you want the ears to be, what you do next. So if I want the ears to be round, then I could just kind of smash this flat and, and make it into, this is a, a larger example, but just make it into a flat cookie kind of a shape. If I want them to be pointy ears like these, then I need to kind of pinch and pull. So what I'm gonna do is kind of hold the ball from on two sides like this, and I'm gonna kind of pinch and pull. 
And you see how this end is kind of flattening off while this end is kind of bulging out? And as I do this, I'm kind of letting my fingers pinch to a point on the sides as I flatten with these two fingers, right? So I'm using two, two hands here, this hand just to kind of direct it into a point, while these two fingers on this hand are just pinching flat. And now you can see the point is quite flat, but this area over here is still kind of thicker. So I'm just gonna kind of squeeze that out. And without my fingers on the sides, it just kind of spreads apart, right? So that way I have that sort of pointy shape to the ear. And then I can kind of just wrap it around my thumbs to give it some three dimensionality, some roundness, a groove through there. And then I can just stick it on the side of the head, right? No, no, I have to score and I have to slip. Score it, the part that's gonna connect, scratch that surface up, slip, just a droplet of water rubbed into there. And then I can kind of hold this on the inside and press this against it. It's kind of a little, getting a little bit crowded in here with all these teeth and the eyeballs and the tongue. And so I gotta be careful not to ruin all the things I've already done. But there, I got one big honking ear. Okay, let's make the other ear. Roll a ball. Start to flatten it, but use these fingers on this hand to guide it into a point where I'm flattening it. All right, and then squeeze the thick end until it's kind of flat and it makes basically like an almond shape. Then I kind of wrap it around my thumb to give it some curved th three dimensionality. And then I score. And then I slip. And then I press together. There we go. And then when I'm done, I just want to kind of make sure that it stands up. I, see how it's kind of fallen over backwards? So what I'm going to do is just kind of push this down and forward a little bit so that he stands up and then I'm gonna let him dry standing up like that and that's what he looks like. Now no matter what you have made with your clay if you have been using the same Stonex air self-drying air drying clay that I've been using a very important thing to remember is that Yes, this is hard as a rock. No matter what you've made, it's hard as a rock. But if you try to go pour water into this, it's gonna turn back into mud. So don't let these sculptures get wet. If you wanted to, you could paint the outsides and the insides. You could spray it with a clear acrylic sealer to make it last a little longer. But if you have uh, made things properly, then it should be hard as a rock and it should last forever as long as you don't get it wet. I hope you have enjoyed making a cute little gargoyle monsters with me today and I can't wait to see you in the next lesson.